Good evening, and welcome to St. Edward on this 16th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Please stand. Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. If anyone is wondering if there's something wrong with the air conditioning this evening, there's nothing wrong with it. We just wanted to have a beginning of a meditation on hell to help us begin our Mass. <laughs> Thanks be to God that we have the modern conveniences that we all take so for granted sometimes until, of course, they're missing. It's a wonderful way to begin our Mass today with an act of gratitude towards our Lord for so many things which are part of our ordinary life, which are tremendous blessings, and we forget about them. So as we call to mind our sins, Let's include among them, sometimes, that lack of gratitude that the Lord may cleanse us of our blindness and fill us with his light. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, on earth peace. To
Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Woe to the shepherds who mislead and scatter the flock of my pasture, says the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the shepherds who shepherd my people. You have scattered my sheep and driven them away. You have not cared for them, but I will take care to punish your evil deeds. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock from all the lands to which I have driven them and bring them back to their meadow. There they shall increase and multiply. I will appoint shepherds for them who will shepherd them so that they need no longer fear and tremble. And none shall be missing, says the Lord. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David, as king he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. The word of the Lord. Spread 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have become near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He who made one and broke down the dividing wall of enmity through his flesh, abolishing the law with its commandments and legal claims that he might create in himself one new person in place of the two, thus establishing peace and might reconcile both with God in one body through the cross, putting that enmity to death by it. He came and preached peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, we both have access in one spirit to the Father. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest for a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and so they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. 
People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them, for they were like sheep without a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. The Gospel of the Lord. So we're in the thick of ordinary time, Jesus' public ministry. He had just sent out his disciples to go to the towns before him to get things ready. They came back. They're excited. They had been casting out demons and teaching people, getting them ready to receive the fullness of Jesus' message. They were excited. They were chomping at the bit to get to tell Jesus all their stories. They were tired. They had just spent, I don't know how much time, on mission, getting things ready. They had just traveled back. They were just getting together again. They were tired and worn out and excited and busy. Because they come back and they, with Jesus, all these people are coming and going and they got to take care of all these people. They're so busy they can't even eat. So they're excited, they're tired, and they're busy. And Jesus says, hmm, y'all need a vacation. Hey, we need some quality time together. We need to get a bonfire going and everybody sit around a bonfire with a little glass of wine in your hands and everybody needs to tell their stories and we need to relax. We need to have a good night rest. Come on, let's go. Get in the boat. We're going to a deserted place. And then the crowd gets there before them. Now, if I'm one of the disciples, and Jesus looks at that crowd and says, hmm, look how needy they are. I'm going to teach them. If I'm one of the disciples, I've come back, I'm excited, I'm tired, I've been super busy. Finally, Jesus is going to give us some quality time with him. And now he says to me, after he told me already, hey, you guys really need some vacation time. We need to go have some quality time together. We show up, he sees the group of people, and he starts teaching them. If I'm one of the disciples, I'm thinking, what am I, chopped liver? What about my needs? I thought we were going to go on vacation. I thought we were going to have some quality time. How come their needs are more important than mine? You're the one that stopped me from being busy and said, hey, let's go on vacation. I was too busy to even think about it. And now you change your mind on me. And... uh, The greatest thing about it is it doesn't even stop there. If you keep reading along in the story, which we will, he's going to say, hey, what food do you all have? There's thousands of people here. Give me all your food. And by the way, get everybody all organized and set them down in a nice orderly fashion. So wait a minute. Not only do you you change my vacation plans, are their needs more important than my needs? Now you're telling me, give, give more. And don't just give of your energy, but also give your food. That little bit of food that you brought, give it all. That had to be a moment of great testing for the disciples. Everything that could have been 
squeezed out of him was getting squeezed out of him, changing plans and asking more, and then they didn't even get up their food. They didn't even have time to eat before, and now he's saying, giving up all your food. Give it to all those people because they're hungry. It's just not fair. It certainly doesn't seem right. Especially after Jesus himself looked and saw, wow, these guys need a vacation. How did they do that? What kept them from blowing up? What kept them from saying, forget this guy? Yeah, vacation. Work harder, give up all your food. Generosity, generosity, generosity. What kept them from blowing up? What allowed them to do that? One thing. Trust. They trusted him. It made zero sense to do what he was telling them to do. They were worn out, they were hungry, and he was telling them, work harder and give away all your food. Don't worry about today. Don't worry about the future. So that's what they did, and then everybody got sick, and everybody starved to death, and everybody got, had psychological breakdown. Some of them died of hunger. Some of them got lucky, and they only got away with some long-term disabilities. No. It all worked out. But it all worked out because they were able to trust. And it made no sense. Now, normally, if that were our boss, our priest, our best friend, our spouse, that would be a bad idea to just go along with them. But it's Jesus Christ. It's the one person that we can trust when he pushes us beyond our limits and says, don't worry about tomorrow. I'll take care of it. He's the one person that we can trust 100%. But it's hard. The message of our our gospel passage today is, when I call and when I ask you to, Be super generous. Now that's tricky because sometimes we want to be super generous just because we feel like it, but not because he's calling us to be. Sometimes we get ourselves in trouble because we just pour ourselves out and we go past our limits and run ourselves thin, but not because Jesus is calling us to. I would think most of the time it goes the other way around. We're a little bit more short-handed. I have gave enough. I'm done. And sometimes Jesus says, I know you've given a lot. Give more. I know you're tired and you're worn out. Keep working. When I call and when I ask you to be, Be super generous, which takes a ton of trust. But when we are in those conditions, the fruits are miraculous. Miraculous. Because that's the way they responded to that call of Jesus with absolute trust. They fed 5,000 people with a few loaves and a few fish. 
Jesus could have done that on his own. But many times the miracles that he wants to do, he puts a conditional. If you trust me enough to pour yourself out, I'll do the miracle. Not because I couldn't do it without you. Not because I need all your super generous spirit or even your trust. But because I want you to be part of it. I want you to be that open heart with no reserves to me. That's the relationship I want. That's the relationship where miracles happen. Miracles that we need. Ten reasons why we need miracles today in J Town. Drug addiction, alcohol abuse, video game addiction, different kinds of pleasure addiction. Anything to escape reality, including suicide. Human trafficking, sexual abuse, abortion, is killing many, many women's hearts, identi identity crisis, murders. It's in our world. It's not out there. It's in our world. And the, the, the causes of it are so complex. That we need a miracle, and we need a lot of them. I'm getting quite sick of it because the people I see are getting destroyed. Families are hurting way too much. And the only answer is miracles. The only answer to our society today is miraculous intervention. Ah, we'll work at it. We'll get the program going. No, we won't. And if we do, it's just part of our generous response. But it's not the miracle. We need miracles. We need a miraculous intervention of God to change our world. Because our families are hurting. When are we going to say enough? Jesus has the blueprints for that change. So we turn back, and I know you're sick of me harping on this because it's, I feel like it's all I've ever harped on since the time I walked in the door. But Jesus has the blueprints. It's time to go to him. We pray, and hopefully we pray every day. But today's gospel reminds us we need quality time. Our daily prayer is not enough. We need quality time. Two simple ways for that quality time to be lived out which we've forgotten about to some degree. One is retreats. Retreats used to be something that was much more part of our lives. Going on retreat. Retreats within our parish. I would love to start working towards being a parish, a community that have many people if not the majority of us, regularly going on retreats. It changes us. It allows us to trust Jesus. The second one is easier and just as powerful, and you can do it in just one hour. You don't even have to take a whole day or a whole weekend. Adoration. Eucharistic adoration. 
We have it for an hour after our Masses during the weekdays from Monday to, Monday to Saturday. But you can also have Eucharistic adoration without exposition, without putting the monstrance on the altar and you get to actually see Jesus right there in the host. You can come and just sit with him right before the tabernacle. Ah, oh, brother, I can pray at home. I know, we can all pray at home. Eucharistic adoration is a retreat. It's a mini retreat. It's quality time. It can't be replaced just by other little things. Jesus, the Eucharistic Jesus, is the center of our lives. From there comes all blessings. Jesus calls the disciples to be apart in a deserted place. Then he got distracted. Hopefully, sometimes that happens. You can go to Eucharist Adoration and find somebody else there who needs to talk to you. Okay, that can happen. There were many other times when that didn't happen with his disciples. And the message that today brings, Jesus brings us is that we need quality time. Dear Jesus, you called your apostles apart. And through that trust that they had in you, you performed miracles. Work miracles through our trusting hearts today. We need you. Help us to choose quality time with you to make it happen so that through our open hearts, you make the absolutely needed changes in our world and in our families happen. Amen. We profess our faith, I believe, in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Now offer up our prayers and petitions, opening our hearts to our Lord, asking him to help us grow in our trust in him. For our Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, and religious ministers, and for all who serve the church, may they shepherd the people of God with faithful, faithfulness and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, 
May their service to the members of their communities advance the causes of peace and justice. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families and households, may barriers of anger and division be broken down through understanding and forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who feel lost and alone in the world, for those in prison and for those who suffer from their absence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people, may they respond to the call of Christ to be sent out doing good through service, as well as vocations to the priesthood and religious life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in the peace of Christ, especially Father Maurice Hayes and David Lawrence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And today we pray for Bill Stone, for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you always for all of your blessings. With gratitude in our hearts, we continue to lift up our needs. We know that without your blessings, we cannot live our daily lives. Help us always to trust you more through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O oh God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept we pray this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might, lo- you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, And as we look forward to his second coming, 
We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make, may he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Edward, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people, you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. One last little reminder, this Wednesday from 3 to 7 in the cafeteria is the St. Edward Blood Drive, a very practical way to give gift of life to someone, uh, many ways to share, and that's definitely a very real one. So hopefully you can participate from 3 to 7 p.m. Have a wonderful Sunday evening, or sun Saturday evening, Sunday. God bless you all. Good to see you. Always wonderful to pray with you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Show.